Good morning, and thank you for joining us live here at Rooted Bible Fellowship Church in the heart of Edgewood, Maryland, where our pastor is Pastor Kevin L. Webster and our First Lady Sharon Webster. We're so pleased that you would join us today in our worship experience, and let's hear a word from our pastor. Yeah. Think about it, think about it. For joining us live here at the Jesus, we have recovered it all. Amen. We truly thank the Lord for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. What a wonderful God and awesome God we serve. Amen. Let's give a round of applause to our choir singing this morning. Fresh anointing of God's spirit. Amen. It's good to be in our house one more time. It's good to be in the presence of a holy God. Amen. When eternity is in your heart, when there's eternity in your heart, you don't mind worshiping the Lord, amen? You don't mind being in his presence and in the house of the Lord, amen? So we truly give honor to the Lord on this great day of worship. It's good to see everyone. There's a great spirit in here today, amen. The Lord is blessing you real good. Truly, I thank the Lord, amen. Let's get started. I found myself, thank you, musicians. Let's give a round of applause for our musicians. Let minister our music, great. Our guys are great. I found myself in 1981, August of 1981, 95 degrees, hot, mosquitoes, Sand fleas, the smell of a swamp right next to me, alligators. And I found myself in a place they call Paris Island, South Carolina, Marine Corps, Marine Corps. I don't want to get no Army guys or Air Force guys or Navy guys and stuff, but the real deal. And I found myself on the firing line. I was 17 years old, nervous, holding an M16. 
in the midst of a lot of yelling, screaming at that time, guys walking up and down the firing line, yelling, screaming, sticks in their hand, doing what they do. And, and I found myself looking at a target that was 500 yards away, a six-foot target. And I was in a prone position, nervous. And I had to get rounds down range to hit that six-foot target 500, five football fields away. A six-foot target looks like a little dot. And I kept realizing that every time I squeezed the round off, I kept missing my target. I would squeeze a round off, I would miss my target, kept missing it, missing it, no results, every time I squeezed a round off. And so I had to raise my hand, you couldn't talk, there was no talking, you just raise your hand, and the drill instructors and all of them would come, and I said, can I clear my weapon? Can I clear my weapon? Because I need to, we use this terminology, I need to change my dope on my weapon. Because I realized that I needed to go back to battle site zero. I had to take my M16 back to its original. I had to take the rear sight back to its original. The front sight was already stationary, but the rear sight aperture had to go back to its original. And then from its original, I had to properly adjust my weapon because my sights were off. You got to walk with me this morning. And after I just adjusted my sights on that hot day in 1981 in August in a place called Paris Island, I started hitting the bullseyes. I started hitting the target that was 500 yards away. That's how it is for us as Christians. A lot of times we find ourselves not hitting the target. Find ourselves, our alignment is off. Our spiritual alignment is off. And then we realize this, watch this. All that's going on in the world, all that's hitting me in my life, and all that I'm encountering, watch this. Let me take a minute. Uh, Lord, let me go back to battle site zero. I got to go back to the original. I got to go back to battle site zero. And that's how it is for some of us. Amen. We find ourselves missing spiritual targets like holiness. Like victory over sin. Huh? Like, 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 like having a Christ attitude, a Christ mindset. Having kingdom commitments. I need to go back to battle site zero because my commitment for the kingdom, not to root it, but for the kingdom of God, is not lined up. Amen. And that's what we want to take a few minutes this morning. We want to, we want to preach from the topic of a challenge to us, even on TV land, amen, a challenge is we need to go back to battle site zero. And we need to start hitting the target rooted Bible. And the target that we need to hit, and we want to focus on this one target today, it's called Bible study. We're not hitting the target no longer. When it comes down to this word, we're missing it, amen? And we want to look at this thing of hitting the target of getting back to the original. Getting back to the thing that redeemed us, the thing that saved us, the thing that has kept us throughout all these years, amen? We need to go back and hitting the target, amen? I'm so glad on that day I had to adjust my sights because I would never have been given that title Marine because if you can't shoot, <laughs> you can't be no Marine. And I'm so glad that I had to go back to battle site zero. And some of us need to go back to battle site zero. Watch this. Our, our text for this morning, I did something a little different. I didn't give you a lot of scriptures. I'm not going to give it up on the screen. Guess what? You need to go in your Bible today. We're going back to the way it was in the 80s and the 70s before the screens became popular. 
you know what we had to do? We had to go back and we had to open up the book. Because guess what? Pastor Webster can tell you anything. But you got to know that what I'm telling you lines up with what God said. Amen? And so we need to go back to the book. We got too many opinions in the church as it is. People think that they know what they need to know. No. What does God say? And so I want you to turn your Bibles, and for those who are able to stand, give me a few minutes of your time. Let's go back to battle site zero. Let's readjust our sights. Let's go back to the original. Go back to the manufacturer. Amen. What they prescribe. And the manufacturer for us is God. Amen. And look what it says here. We're going to go, and, and for those who are able, I'm going to give you two verses. Two verses we want to look at. Amen. And we're going to look at verse chapter, um, um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Let's read that first. And I'm only going to give you about seven verses today. That's all. You have a pen or whatever, we back to a Bible study. You're going to write it down. I ain't got no hoop for you today. It says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. Let's get that. Get that in your spirit. Unto God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth. Did you see that? I, and if you get a chance, read 16, because it says avoid godless chatter. Somebody needs to hear that right now. I, the Holy Spirit just told me to get you. Get away from that foolishness. Get into the book. Amen? But watch what it says over here in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and, and in verse 316, it says this, all scripture, all scripture from Genesis to Revelation, is God breathed. Theo New Stars, God breathed it. Amen. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, because every once in a while God has to rebuke us for correcting us and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Here we go. Battle site zero. Back to a Bible study. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We <laughs> love you for who you are. We love you for loving us even when we're unlovable. Even when we're in our sin, you keep loving us. You keep blessing us, upholding us in your right hand. And we thank you, Lord. You, you, you're the one who orders our steps. Says so the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by you. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this great gift of eternal life. We really can't appreciate it now, but one day, by and by, we're going to see you. And we're going to truly thank you for this great salvation. We're pressing our way into glory, and we thank you. Now, Lord God, speak a challenging word to the church so that we would get back to the basic, and that is the word of God. We love you and we adore you. Sanctify us in your word because your word alone is true. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Battle site zero, hitting the target and this morning, the target is Bible study. Let me just say very quickly and restate a statement that I made years ago. The body of Christ has problems. There are literally thousands upon thousands, maybe even millions of Christians sitting in our churches and they are literally starving spiritually. And it's not because, watch this, it's not because the church is not doing this job. I, I, I get tired of hearing about what the church is not doing. Church ain't doing this, church ain't doing what, No, what are you doing? No, it's not because it's not what the church is not doing, nor is it because of what some faithful pastors and preachers are not doing. But, but the monstrosity, the reason for this monstrosity is simply because many, listen, many born again professing 
I love Jesus. I'm going to heaven. Believers refuse to study their Bibles. Huh? Can't even pick it up. Go all week and not pick up this word. Months, don't pick up the word. Amen? And, and that's a monstrosity. That's, uh, the enemy loves that when, when, when born-again believers are no longer picking up the Bible, no longer for the church, the believers in church, is there a hunger for God's word? No longer. Amen? No longer there a hunger for God's word. And the, and the world's enticement is taking the church away from the Holy Scriptures. Amen? 1,200 or more channels on TV, Netflix, On Demand, HBO, YouTube. Then we have Facebook, hmm? Instagram, Twitter, Cyber World. Ain't nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. And even for some, watch this, listening to preaching on TV and the radio, you think that's a substitution for you yourself getting into the word of God. And the problem with the church, if there is a problem, the church doesn't hold the membership uh, uh, accountable to learning God's truth. Amen? No Bibles no longer on Sunday. There'd be a time everybody carried your Bibles to church on Sunday, amen? Everybody, even the children. Y'all remember a time when, when our children went to church, we, we, they had little Bibles. No longer is there Bibles at every function. That the word of God, for every meeting in the church, there should be a word. For every meeting, I don't care if it's a church business meeting or, or, or whatever the meeting may be, there should be centered around the word of God. Amen? There should be a short word. I don't care if it's two sisters getting together to meet or, brother, what is a word? We're getting away from that. Amen? The word of God should be the center of everything in our lives. It's the word of God, brothers and sisters. And, 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 and biblical illiteracy plagues our churches. Four out of ten believers. Amen? Read their Bibles during the week. That means... Four out of ten will pick up the word all week long. Amen? And in 2022, amen, Christians don't even know Old Testament and New Testament characters. Amen? Sister First Lady was giving the word to the women's auxiliary, and some of y'all should have been here. Amen? You need all the church you can get. And she was talking about Esther, and, and I was sitting here while I was listening to with all the pastors. A lot of folks don't even know the story of Esther. Ruth and Naomi. Amen. And in 2022, we don't know the different books in the Bible. We don't know the different books and how to get to the different books. But, but we know our favorite shows. We, we, we are consumed by entertainment. And, and watch this. And we don't spend no time on the word. But we can spend hours. Walk with me. We can spend hours Watching our series. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Especially on that Netflix, that stuff will grab you and pull you in. Them, them series. And we can watch series after series. Hit the pause button. Go to the bathroom. Excuse me. Come right back. What, that, that, hit that. And so we got so much technology to get that we can just hit the pause and stop the show. And we can spend hours watching two and three series, but we can't even spend 10 minutes in the Word. We got to get back to Battle Site Zero. We got to go back to the original plan. Amen? Amen. We'll TV binge, but we won't Bible binge. And watch this. Listen, because I'm going to get you well in a second. Listen, uh, 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 Without Bible study, listen to me, without their, what the non-Bible study child of God. The non-Bible study child of God produces spiritual immaturity. 
We want to know why the church is always taking a hit because of spiritual immaturity. It produces powerlessness, joylessness, ineffectiveness, non-commitment. We want to know why is the commitment leaving because there's no word. You know what keeps us in line? Because it's the word. It's what God say. Hopelessness comes when you and I don't get in the word. We, you'll find yourself so depressed. Why? Because you don't understand that this is where the happiness and the joy lies. Sin sickness sets in. Carnal minded stuff come in. And now you're so fleshly minded. And guess what? We become a pawn for the devil. Amen? And, and the world will abuse Brothers and sisters that refuse to spend time with God, the world will abuse us. Amen? And so the non-Bible study believers, they, they're not able, watch this, when you don't get into the word, you can't discern a storm. When the storms of life come, and watch this, you may have some right now sunny days, but let me tell you something right now, hold on to your seat, a storm is on the horizon. You may have just came out of a storm, you may be in a storm, you may be leaving a storm, but I'm telling you, this is a process of life, and if you're not in a storm, a storm is coming. And when you don't have Bible, you don't know if it's a temporary storm, you don't know if it's a passing storm, you don't even know if it's just a quick evening shower storm. But in the word of God, you can discern the storms that come in your life. Huh? So what do Pastor Webb want to do today? We want to go back to battle site zero. Amen? We want to go back because I don't know about you. I want to keep hitting those targets. Amen? It's something when you keep hitting bullseyes. Amen? To make you feel good. Amen? And so we want to keep hitting spiritual bullseyes. So watch this. Let's go back and let's understand something. Why should we study the Bible? Why should we study the Bible? And I'm going to give you seven reasons why, and that's all I'm going to give you today. Seven reasons why. First and foremost, before we even get into the seven reasons, let me say this to the Rooted Bible Fellowship Church family. The reason why we read the Bible and study the Bible, because we're Christians. Because we're born again. Because we belong to God. We're God's children. And watch this. This is the only way that you and I, through the word of God and prayer, this is how we come in contact with our Heavenly Father. That's how we come in. That's how we get a relationship. That's how we get strong in our relationship. It's through the word of God. It's through the word. Amen. And so that's first and foremost. Amen. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But let me give you, and you got to go in your Bibles today. I'm going to give you seven reasons why we should be in the word. And the first reason I'm going to give you, amen, and we got to understand this. We got to learn how to operate in this word, amen, amen. We can operate cell phones, checkbooks, ATM cards, computers, but why can't we operate the word? Huh? Why can't we operate the word? Watch this. Seven things. The first thing that we have to understand, why should we study the Bible? Because the Bible, God's word, this is, watch this, and I don't want nobody to get upset, but I got to tell you the truth. This is not the Quran. This is not world translation. And I know I got some folks on YouTube, and get, you can cut it off. I'm going to tell you the truth. This is God's holy word. This is God's holy word. And I base, watch this, I base my everlasting eternity on this right here. My eternity is based on this. My destiny is based on this. It's not based on who I think I am or what I do. It's based on what God says. Hmm? And so we have to understand that the first thing is that the Bible is the source of life. Write that down somewhere. Life is in the word of God. Amen. You ain't living until you get in that word, get down in your heart. Life is in the word. It's the source of life. 
and watch this. It's the source of life. It's, we know that life means bio, uh, biological, but we also know the spiritual term life is zo. Amen? Now, now watch this. The word of God, the Bible, is not the source of your biological life. Your mom and your dad, they're the source. Uh, watch this generated by God who created you by way of your mom and your dad. But the Bible is the source of life by way of Zoe. It's a life that comes with meaning, a life with eternal purpose, a life with eternal value. Amen? Look what it says. Turn your Bible. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1. Write this down somewhere. We're going back to the old school, writing down. Amen? It's not on the screen. 1 Peter 1, 23, chapter 1, verse 23. And look what it says. For you have been born again, zo, real life. We just did a home going service, one of our saints. Amen. Sister Taylor, amen. She tapped into real life. Why? Because she came in contact with the living word. Watch this. And it says this, and it says, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. Huh? That's what it says. Everything else that goes on to say, everything else is going to pass away. But let me tell you right now, Rooted Bible, this word ain't going to never pass. This word endures forever. Amen? And so we see that is the source of life. Like I said earlier, faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God is where our life began. My life began for me back in 1988 when the word of God now came and penetrated my dark soul. My black heart. My heart was black. Don't look at me crazy. Your heart was black too. Your soul was dark too. And if the word of God didn't hit you, it's still black, it's still dark. But the word of God came in and it brought light in the midst of darkness and it opened up my soul and I received a, a wonderful savior. And from that day, life began. The word of God produces life. It produces eternal life, a quality of life. Everlasting life, everlasting life is in me. That's watch this. That's why you ain't got to try to find me when it comes down to serving God and worshiping God and honoring God. Why? Because eternal life is in me. But then, secondly, it's the source of continual life. Amen. Not only do we have the position of eternal life, but it's it is the source of me continuously living in this spiritual life. Amen? In the word of God. It only, not only does it give life, but it makes life worth living. I'm going to tell you right now, this is real life. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know about anybody else, but, but I'm living my best life. In the Lord, that is. This is real living right here. I, I thought I was living back in the early 80s before I knew the Lord, but no, I was on the path of destruction. But this is real life right here. This is real life. Look what Jesus says. Turn with me. Look at another scripture. Oh, I'm going to give you a couple. Look at Matthew 4.4. 4. Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. And look at Matthew 4.4. 4. Turn your Bibles. And this is how you learn. I was listening to First Lady. First Lady, uh, that's my girl. She, she gives me some stuff. I bounce stuff. She said, you know what? You give them too much. You spoil them. You give them all the scriptures. You give them everything. And watch this. You know what it does? And she's right. It creates a laziness. Because after a while, you're getting all the scriptures on the screen, you will never learn how to work your Bible. You'll never learn how to learn the books of the Bible. That's how we learn the books of the Bible. We learn the book. And every once in a while, watch this. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about your pride. You go to the table of content. And that's how you learn to stop worrying about someone thinking that you're all spiritual. No, if you don't know where Matthew is, go to the table of content. Humble yourself. And learn how to work your way through your, through your weapon. This is your weapon. Amen? This is your weapon. 
This is how you live. The devil can't do nothing with this. He's trying to keep you from your weapon. You know one thing, when I was in the Marine Corps, I don't like to keep talking about it, but one thing, you get caught without your weapon. Find out what happened. You carried your weapon everywhere you went. I don't care wherever you went, you carried your weapon with you. No matter what you did, your weapon went with you wherever you went. Same thing with the word of God. Look what it says here in Matthew 4, 4. Watch what it says here. It says, and, and, and Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. Watch this. But on every word, this is where continuous life comes, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's how we live. That's how we live this life. That's how I learned how to live this life and live this life. That's how I learned how to be a good husband and a good father and a good pastor. I learned it by, watch this, living on the word of God. That's how you learn. But then, watch this. It's so important. The Bible study is so important. And it gives us life and, 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 and not only life, but abundant life. This is where abundant life is. Amen. This is where the abundant life is. This is where life becomes rich and exciting and meaningful. Amen. And if you're married, watch this, and you're, you and your wife are believers, when y'all in that word together, I'm going to tell you, the enemy can't form no weapons against you. He'll try to hit you with all kinds of stuff, but I'm going to tell you, when you got a husband and wife in the word, I tell you what, when the enemy comes upon you like a flood, the standard of holiness and righteousness lifts up, and in the midst of everything, you look at each other and say, give each other a high five. Oh, the devil ain't going to get us today. Oh, no. Oh, no. We right here, baby. We're going to walk this thing. It's the word of God. But then thirdly, the word of God, only got seven. It's the source of truth. <laughs> you want truth? Amen. You get it from God. God has the truth. He gives you and I absolute truth. He gives us truth without no mixture of error in it whatsoever. Truth from God. God is not like a man that he should lie. Amen. The truth be told, and we love the Lord, but every once in a while we lie a little bit. Oh, come on now. I know y'all holy. Sometimes you kind of, you embellish some things. You can taint some things. You done told that story a couple of times. It changed. You done told that story, and you know that story done changed over the years. Come on now. You done added something to that story, but not with God. God's word is pure, and it's a shield to them that put their trust in him. Add not to his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Huh? Three out of, between three and four thousand new books are published every day. And now that number is, is about the same because now the internet has taken the place of books, and there are, uh, so much information out there being circulated. Internet, so much out there. But there's only one book that contains absolute, walk with me, unfallible, incorruptible, indestructible, never going away truth, life-changing truth, transforming truth, and it's God's word. Look what he says. Look what, look what it says in John. You hear me say it on Sundays. Turn your Bibles. Look at John 17, 17. So you know when you hear Pastor Webster say it on Sunday, you, you know where it comes from. Look what it says here in John 17, 17. Let me read it. Take your time. Let me hear some pages. I tell the preachers, I know we got... The new preachers, well, young preachers, and even some of the old preachers love using their computers up here. And there's nothing wrong with it. Don't get me wrong. But what happens when the internet goes down? What happens when you stand at the sacred desk and, the print, and when the, the little G-O-D, the prince of the power of the air, throws something on your net because he controls all the airwaves? This is his atmosphere. What happens when you just got that computer, but you ain't got that written writ, and he throws something your way, and it throws you off, and you preaching it throws. That's why you always got to have that word. Keep your computer, but keep that word right there. 
Because when he acts up, you can hit that thing, close it up, and then you pick up that, pick up that Bible. Yeah. Here we go. Watch this. Look what he says in 1717. Real quick, he says this. Sanctify them, Jesus talking. Saint, set them apart. Set them apart, Father. Set them apart by the truth. Your word is truth. Jesus says, watch this, we're set apart, we're sanctified by the truth. It's the truth that sanctifies my life. It's the truth that starts dropping stuff out of my life. Some of that old stuff that's trying to hang in my life, it's the truth that starts eradicating that old sinful stuff out of our lives. It's the truth. As you engage in the truth, the truth has a way of now starting to eliminate some of the things out of your life and set you apart unto God. No truth, no setting apart. Huh? It's the word of God that gives us the truth about who God is, who man is, what heaven is all about, what hell is all about, because hell is real. Huh? It's in the word of God that, that gives us and it deals with the past and, and the present and, and the future. And, it, and it's in the word of God that deals with our emotions. And it's in the word of God that speaks to our relationships. It's in the word of God that corrects our attitudes and our motives. It's in the word of God that teaches us how to handle our money and teach us how to treat people right. It's in the word of God that everything that you need is in the word of God if you need to drop some weight go to the word of God if you need to get your mind regulated go to the word of God everything that you need is in the word of God it's in the word huh? but also it's this word I love this word uh, some, see, sometimes you got to eat this word more than you eat your food. See, sometimes, watch this, you wake up in the morning, you want to go straight to the breakfast. Now, you keep the fast going, you get into this word. You want to see some changes, you keep that fast going. And you say, I ain't putting nothing in my mouth until I get something down in my soul. I ain't putting nothing in my, I ain't putting nothing in my belly until I get something down in my spirit. Because right now, I don't need no food. I need something down in my spirit, and I need a word. Hmm? It's the, it's the word of God, fourthly. It's the source of power. Power comes from the word of God. Look what he says real quick. Y'all walking with me? Somebody said, we walking. All right, you better keep walking. You better learn how to get that Bible. Watch this. In the book of Romans, y'all know what kind of church y'all in. Look at Romans 1.16. Real quick, go to Romans. Take your time. Verse 16. Amen. Look at this. In Romans uh, um, chapter 1, verse 16. Amen. It's in the word of God that your power come. In your hand, in those 66 books, you hold supernatural resources that's able to change every area of your life in a way that brings us closer, that's it, to Christ. It's here. It's supernatural. He says here in Romans 1.16, watch this, let me read it to you real quick. He says, for I'm not ashamed. Yes, sir. Of what? Of the gospel. I'm not ashamed. I don't care if people talk about me all the day. Uh-oh, -uh, he's a holy roller. He, he in church. He loved the Lord. Yeah, I do. Yes, sir. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. The gospel gives me the power. Did you see that? It's the gospel. It's the gospel that saves, the gospel that delivers, the gospel that redeems. And it has power. Power to do what? To change. It has power, according to, when you get a chance, write it down. Hebrews 4.12, it has power to convict us. For it says, for the word of God is living and active. Watch this. I love this illustration. I had an old um, Bible professor when I was in Bible college give us this. Amen. Old Dr. Fowler from Dallas Seminary. He gave us this illustration. He says, when you're actually looking at the word, you don't realize it. But in your spiritual eyes, you got to see that the words are actually moving. 
the words are actually jumping off the page because it's a living word. All those other writers, they ain't got no living word, but God's word is a living word, and it's a living word, and it's active, and it's sharper than any double-edged sword. And he says this in, in Hebrews 4.12, the, the writer, and watch this. He says that it's able to penetrate even to divide soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and this is what I love, and, and it judges the thoughts and the attitude of our hearts. It says that the word of God get all the way down in you. <laughs> it goes beyond the makeup. <laughs> it goes beyond the facade. It goes beyond the hypocrite, hypocritical stuff. It goes all the way down in your spirit. And guess what it does? It starts revealing who you really are. It reveals who you really are to yourself. It begins to show you who you are. And not only is it a double-edged sword, not only does it cut you one way, but as it comes out, it's able to heal you at the same time. So when God says, I'm able to show you who you are, break you down, turn you around, but at the same time, because I love you, I'm able to heal you, comfort you, build you, strengthened you but you first gotta see who you are and then when you see who you really are i don't care what your mama say i don't care what your daddy say i don't care what church folks say but when you get in the word i'm gonna show you who you really are and once you get in there i'm able to cut you and then i'm able to bind you and i'm able to heal you is anybody so glad that we serve a god like that Maybe the way to cut away some of that holy stuff. It's some stuff in our hearts. Nobody knows about it except the Lord and us. Huh? Don't think, well, I'm old now. Yeah, you old, you got some unholy stuff in your thoughts too. Matter of fact, the older you get, the more your thoughts start to try to take you over. Huh? Able to search out that holy stuff. And, and it has power to change you. See, see, when we get into it every now and then and every now and then, uh, I, I say to myself, I'm going to put the word on. Let the word do it. I ain't got to say nothing. Am I right? And then she say, uh, isn't this what the Bible say? Isn't that what the word say? Lord, you ain't got to say no more. Lord, Jesus, help me. Because the word of God convicts us. Cuts us. People will cut you, leave you bleeding. God cuts you, he begins to heal you. Because he wants to conform you. See, when God cuts you, he wants you to look like him. So he starts to cut you to conform you. So he'll start slicing off some of that wickedness and some of them lies and some of that deception and some of that gossip and some of that disobedience and some of that rebellion because he's trying to make you to look more like him. He wants you to talk like him and walk like him and be like him. But the word of God is the instrument that he uses. Huh? Yeah, it's the, it's the source of power. Without the word, you can't change. An enemy going to use you like a puppet. He going to use you. Without no word, you ain't got no power. Power's in the word. But not only that, real quickly, watch this. Fifthly, it is the source of happiness. Oh, Lord have mercy. It's the source of blessedness. The Greek word makarios means to be blessed. Uh, blessed is the man, happy is the man. It means the source of our tranquility. Huh? Look what he says. See, you, you can never, you can never know happiness apart from the word of God. Happiness for the child of God comes when we find out, watch this, what pleases God. And we begin to live it out. When you begin to live out what pleases God, I'm telling you right now, that's where happiness fills. 
happen when you start to walk like he asked you to walk and do what he asked you to do. I'm telling you right now, he'll begin to fill you with a blessedness. That's a blessedness. Look what he says real quick. We only got two more and we out of your way. Look at Luke. So hopefully somebody, anybody getting your sights lined up? Huh? Start hitting this target. Battle site zero. Let's, let's put the dope on our weapon. I don't mean dope, 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 dope. Make sure we get that straight. I got some folks. Yeah. Luke 11, 28, real quick. And last two. We'll get it out your way. Look at this. 11, 28. Look what he says in Luke eleven twenty eight. 28. Find your way. Go to the table of content. Find the gospel according to Luke. And look what he says in Luke 11, 28. We're almost finished. As Jesus was saying, there was a, a woman in the crowd called out, and cry, called out, blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. And Jesus replied, blessed rather are those, here we go, happy, blessed, Jesus says, to those who heard, hear the word of God and obey it. Did y'all see that? That's in the book. He said, you want happiness? You got to get in the word. You want, you want tranquility? You got to get in the word. Watch this. An unhappy saint means that they're not living out their created purpose. If you're unhappy today, you're unhappy. You always, you always got folks in saying they love the Lord, but they always got a bad disposition. Nasty. You got, you got some nasty Christians. Huh? Nasty. Just nasty. Mad all the time. Every time you talk to them, there's always something negative. Huh? And I've learned over the last, well, I learned within the last 10 years how to start getting them on out of the, I start to learn this. Uh, you, distance. Because that stuff is contagious. Your nastiness, bad company corrupts good more. Look, I'm happy as all not because you nasty, now I'm becoming nasty. But, 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 and they always upset and mad. You know why? Because there's no word. See, they're not living out their created purpose. They're not living out the purpose that God has. And they're not living out their created purpose because there's no word. There's no Bible study. When there's no word, you can't live out your purpose. I don't care what anybody, you can come to church. You can pop up and sit in the seat. You can, you can train an animal to do that. You can train a dog, and I ain't saying we're dogs. You can train a dog how to come down and sit down. But you're not living out your created purpose. That's why there's no happiness. That's why there's no blessedness. Because once you tap into your purpose, once you start living out your existence, once you start living the way that God has designed you to live, purpose you to live, I'm telling you right now, Macarius has fills up your whole life. And so the word of God is a source of happiness. Amen. Let me give you the last two. It's a source of growth. You cannot bypass milk diet and go straight to a meat diet. Amen. We got some folks who want to get bad in the Bible. I want to, I want to get this deep word. This, I, I want to learn these deep truth. Well, watch this. No baby can go straight to a steak until, you, until they learn how to drink the milk. And what you're trying to do, you're trying to be something that you ain't. You're trying to go straight to something. Have you drunk any milk lately? You got to drink some milk. There's no such thing as an overnight wonder. You got to grow up in this thing. You got to grow in your walk with Christ. It takes time and experience and trials and tribulation. It takes time. You just don't overnight all of a sudden because you got saved last month. All now you're a theologian. I got folks telling me, Pastor, well, all right, you just got saved last month. You gonna tell me, well, you keep living. Not that I can't learn, but you keep living. Watch this. And so we got to understand that it's a source of growth. And, 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 it's, and it's a natural, unreal, spiritually unreal for you to grow up without the milk first. I've never seen, we had four children. We, they didn't come out eating steak. Huh? They got that infamil. Some of y'all Similac. And some of y'all got it straight, straight up. <laughs> Amen. 
and you can bypass the milk diet. And we need some believers to get on that milk diet to know about salvation, to know that you've been justified. To know what sanctification means. Amen. Don't try to tell me some great revelational truth. And you don't know what to be justified mean. To be sanctified mean. You don't know that. Eternal security. These are the things that's going to keep you. It's the milk of God's word. Amen. And that's what's going to grow us up, church. A non-growing Christian is an unhealthy Christian. Amen. And, and, they're, and, they're, and they are spiritually in, they're spiritually sick and spiritually bound. And they're prey for the devil. And so we got to grow up. Let me give you this last word. Watch this. First Peter. Turn to First Peter real fast. First Peter 2.2. 2. Anybody getting anything? We got we to gotta get back. You know, I, I look at, I say, who's on every once in a while? I don't do it all the time. I pull up, you know, we're on YouTube on Bible study. And, uh, and I pull up YouTube, not so much to hear myself teach again, but sometimes I go on there just to see who came to Bible study. I said, man, you know, Lord has blessed us. We ain't no mega church, but the Lord has blessed us, you know, well over 350, 360, 370. But it's something when you keep seeing the same 50 little numbers coming up there. But where's the rest of the church? Huh? The same folks in women's fellowship, the same folks. Same guys in men's fellowship, the same stuff, the same people, but the church is larger than that. Aren't we tied in? Not that you don't do your own personal study, but why aren't we tied in to the covering? Because watch this, I don't care what anybody say, this is where God puts you at, and this is the covering, and this is where God feeds you. This is also where you grow up. You can think what you want. This is where you grow up, amen? And watch this. If you think that, if you, think that you grow up with Tony Evans and John MacArthur and, and T.D. Jakes, that's good, but get sick. Die. Go through a storm. Let me go back to it. First Peter, real fast. 1 Peter 2, 2, real fast. Here we go. Look at it real fast. You know. Is that all right? Can I just preach what I need to preach? One was done. Give me one more, and we're out your way. Look what he says in 1 Peter real fast. 1 Peter 2, 2, and let me give you this, and we'll get out your way. We're trying to go back to battle site zero. It says this. He says, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. Go back. Get, in, get into a Bible study. Learn. The rudiments of your salvation. And it says, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. And now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Did y'all see that? I'm almost finished. We came up. You have heard, I'll tell you the story all, over and over again. No, no big background of growing up in church. But when we went and got saved, we went to our church at Shining Star Baptist Church. Our pastor gave us a diet. We grew up, all the brothers with me, we all grew up in the word, all the sisters, first lady, all the women. We were rooted in truth. And now as I look back over those over 30, almost 40 years, they're still standing on truth. Why? Because you need a root and a foundation that will keep you. Amen? Watch this. And so we see here that spiritual growth as we get into the word, it helps us to grow. Let me give you the last one, and this is key. We're talking about battle site zero, and we're done. We got to line our sights back up. We got to get back in this word, y'all. Some of y'all have been out of the word. You know who you are. You need to pick that Bible up. You need to get back into a devotional. You need to ask somebody to, to show you how to do the devotional. If you're a woman, find one of these women that have been walking with the Lord. If you're a brother, humble yourself, because brothers are so egotistical they don't want to humble themselves and say, brother, can you show me? You know, that's how men are. But watch this. The Bible is the source, and let's get this as we close. It's the source of ministry. How are you going to do ministry, but you ain't got no Bible? How are you going to do ministry, lead ministry, involved in ministry, but no truth? How you going to preach sermons, but you don't spend time with God? How you going to do Sunday school, but you don't spend no time? How you going to sing the praises of God, 
the, the hymns of God, the praises of God choir, when you ain't got no, you ain't spend no time in the word of God. Uh, how you going to do ministry apart from truth? You can't. You need the word of God in order to do ministry. And watch this. The ministry, ministry is the strategy that God uses to preach to others with the truth. And Paul tells Timothy that true ministry is about passing the baton. And what is the baton? The baton is truth. Passing the baton of truth. Watch this. You can't do ministry without no Bible. If you're in ministry right now, and the question is, are you in the Bible? Because if you don't have no Bible, you can't honor God. You can't do ministry because all of ministry revolves around the truth. Fellowship is still with the truth. Now, if we're going to do a get-together, say it's a get-together. Don't call it fellowship because fellowship is around the Son and with the Father, according to 1 John. And then the fellowship is with each other. We are around truth. Look what he says, last scripture, and we're done. 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. What are we talking about? We're talking about those that are in ministry. You can't do ministry without the word of God. And it takes faithful folks in the word of God to do ministry. Amen? Ministry functions, ministry meetings, ministry practices. No Bible, no ministry. Those who lead must be faithful. Look what he says in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. Look what he says. Famous here. He says, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses. Here we go. Passing down the baton of truth. And trust to reliable or faithful people. Faithful in the King James. Who will also be qualified to teach us. You know what he says? He says ministry is about engaging people and giving them truth so that, watch this, they can engage people and give them truth. He says you pass it on down, truth. Did you see that? We're trying to do church without no Bible. We're trying to do ministries without no Bible. How can you do ministries without no word? And those who lead must be faithful to the study of the Bible. Those who witness must be faithful to the study of the Bible. Those who even get up and testify must be faithful to the study of the Bible. Amen? Those, these are the folks, those who lift up praises unto God must be faithful to the study of the Bible. I'm done. What am I saying, Ruth, as we close? We got to get back to battle site zero. We got to get back into this word. I gave you a little instructions today. We got to get back to truth. We got to start picking this word up because God loves us. And this is how he grows us. This is how he speaks to us. This is how he gets us ready for heaven. You get ready for heaven by spending time in his word. And really, we got to get back. TV preacher can't get you back. TV shows can't get you back. You got to get back yourself. And you got to spend time in God. Anybody need to go back to battle site zero? Anybody kind of got, you got your sights off a little bit? You could be honest. Maybe your, 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 your reading your Bible has now went away because other things has crowded, and you say, Lord, I need to get back to a constant diet of reading your word because your word is life. Your word is power. Your word is the source of happiness. It's in your word. It's in your word. And if that's you, just where you are, repent. That's all. Guess what? Pastors got to repent. Because sometimes, watch this, pastors can get so caught up in doing sermons that they can get away from a devotional life. You didn't know that, did you? So watch this. Even pastors at times need to repent. And if you need to repent, say, Lord, I'm sorry. Let me line back up. Let me get me back down the battle site zero. Let me get my sights lined back. Let me get back in your word and honor you. If that's you, just where you are, Lord, forgive me. Help me to get back where I need to be. Maybe one here today that stands in the need of eternal life. Eternal life comes by the word of God. 
You're not saved by people's testimony, but you're saved by what God says. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Amen. Amen. And this is what the word of God says. This is what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. To whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world may be saved. If that's you right now, you say, Lord, save me right now. Forgive me, Lord. Be Lord of my life right now. Just raise your hand. We want to pray with you right now. Today's a day of eternal life. I see that hand. God bless you. Amen. You say, Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, be Savior of my life. If that's you, just raise your hand. Don't worry about nobody because you must be born again. Church don't get you saved. No, no. The word of God must find its way in your heart so you can become a brand new creature. Is there one? Is there one? Is there another? Amen. Maybe it's someone here today. Watch this. Just, just where you are, put your mask on if you so choose. Amen. And you say, Lord, I, need, I just need a, a, a prayer. I need someone to pray with me because I need to go back to battle site zero and get lined back up with this word. If that's you, watch this. Come to the altar just as you are. Just come to the altar. We're going to pray if that's you. You know who you are. I just, I just need some prayer to get back online with the word of God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I want to get back. I'm going to get back in reading this word, getting back in my truth, because this is truth. And this is where I live. This is where I dwell. It's right here in the word. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed because we all got to come this way. Amen. We all got to come this way. And we're just going to pray and we're going to ask God to strengthen and to renew us and renew our commitment back to this. This is it. Amen. Back to a constant diet of the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to first thank you for being God. Being God all by yourself, the great I am, the one who's faithful and true, Lord God. We thank you for being the ancient of days. And Lord God, as we come, we come humble before you. We come broken before you. We come desperate before you. And we plead out for forgiveness, Lord God. We pray that you will renew us, Lord God. Give us a renewed commitment to study your word. To remove things out of our lives, Lord God, that's, keep, that's hindering us from spending time with you. Father God, you've called us for such a time as now. So, Lord God, we pray that you will empower us, speak to us, oh God, and that you would order our steps, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the conviction, but now we're praying, Lord God, that you would lead us on a course of study. We thank you for who you are. We celebrate you for your reign and we thank you for your forgiveness and we thank you for the power that you exhibit in our lives. Now, Lord God, show yourself strong and do what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. Be blessed. Get back in this word. Get back. Battle site zero. Thank you for joining us in service today. And as always, you can visit us on our website at www.rbfchurch.com as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you have a safe and prosperous week.